So the first thing I need to do is to clean up something from 9.2. Let's suppose that you have a point here, R initial. And let's suppose you have another point over here, R final. And let's suppose that you've got some coordinate system. So this is your R initial vector and this is your R final vector. And now we have the vector delta R that connects R initial and R final. And we have some work that's done by this on this particle as it goes between these two points. And you know what that work is. It's whatever the force is that we're talking about. So the work done by whatever this force is that's acting on this particle is F dot delta R. Now there's two ways that this can get a load more complicated. One way that it can get a load more complicated is if the particle, instead of going straight from there to there, take some windy path from there to there. And the other way that it can get a load more complicated is if the force is not constant over that displacement. So maybe the force is really strong here and it's really weak here. Or maybe the force points this way here and then it kind of turns and points this way by the time it gets over to there. All sorts of ways things could be varying with position. And this formula that we've written down here so far that I've had you been practicing with only works if the force is constant. So here's how we deal with it. If the force isn't constant, and maybe also the path is curvy. So now I've got some path that goes from R initial to R final. And maybe the force, which I'm going to draw in some other color, how about black, is varying as I go along this path. So maybe this way here, it started off pointing that way. And then maybe here, it's got that whatever this force is, still pointing that way. And now maybe here though, it's starting to point maybe a little bit different direction. And maybe here this force is starting to point a little different direction. It looks like the way I've been drawing it, it's getting a little longer while it's at it. And now it's pointing that way. And then maybe it starts to shrink a little. Shrink. 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 Okay, now these are not displacements that I'm drawing here. What I've drawn in black is a force that's varying as the particle goes through this space. And so now the question is, what on earth am I going to put into this formula? The delta R's are all over the map. There's a delta R, 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 there's a delta R. The delta R's are all over the map, and so are the F's. Oh boy, well, here's how you do it. You break the path up into a lot of little paths. So you break it up and you go, oh, this is a little path from here to here. And this is a little path from there to there. And this is a little path from there to there. And this is a little path from there to there. And here's a little one from there to there. And here's a, maybe a little longer little one from there to there. And finally, here's a little one from there to there. And you, maybe you number these, okay? So this is displacement zero. So that's delta R sub zero. And then this would be displacement one. And this would be displacement two. And this would be displacement three. And maybe by the time we get all the way over to here, this is maybe displacement number 99. Who knows? There's 100 displacements from zero to 99. And then meanwhile, the F itself is varying. So I could call this F sub zero right here. And this one will be F sub one right there. And this one will be F sub two right there, etc. And this will finally, this black vector right here, that'll be F sub 99. And so here's how you do it. If it's, if it's varying like this, you have to add up all the little bits of work all the little bits of work that are done. And that's how you go about calculating the total work done when the force is varying and the path is some crazy curvy thing. Now that's an awful lot to stomach and I wanna work it out for you in a special case. So here's my special case. A particle starts at x equals zero. A particle ends up at x equals d. 
as it goes to the right, yeah, we've got all these little line segments that tell you the displacement. So this might be delta R naught, and this is delta R1, this is delta R2, this might be delta R sub 99. Meanwhile, and here's what's going to make this one trickier than any one you've done before, the force is going to be getting larger. So I'm going to use a different color ink so that the force vectors uh, don't look like the delta R's. I'll call this, the force vector here, I'll say it starts off at zero. And then I'm going to make the force vector get a little bigger. And then I'm going to make the force better vector get a bunch bigger. And then I'm going to make the force vector just keep getting bigger. Until I get over here, the force vector is going to be whopping, okay? So this force is growing as the particle goes from x equals 0 to x equals d. Let's like make a mathematical version of that. Here's a way of making a force grow as it goes to the right. Let's have f as a function of x be equal to, well, it's going to point right, so I need an i hat. f of x equals something times i hat. And it's going to get bigger as x gets bigger. So I'm going to make it proportional to x itself. f of x is proportional to x. And then I need some proportionality constant. I'll call that proportionality constant, just for lack of anything better. I'll call it capital G. So there's a model of a force that increases as it goes to the right. Now, now we have to figure out how much work was done by this force as the particle went from x equals 0 to x equals d. Well, let's bust this up into 100 segments. Sum i equals 0 to 99 of whatever the force was at x sub i dot delta r sub i. Okay, but the force at x sub i, we have this nice model of that there. That's g times x sub i times i hat. And meanwhile, the delta r's, you can see that if I make them all nice and equally spaced here, and there are 100 of them total, that would be just i hat divided by 100 with d in the numerator because each of them is d over 100 long and there's a hundred of them so their total length adds up to d and the i hat is because each of these little displacements boop, 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 points right and then what are we supposed to do well there's our expression for f of x f at x sub i and there's our expression for delta r sub i and we're supposed to dot them together so g x i d over 100, and then we've got an i hat dot i hat. Well, i hat is a unit vector of length 1, and this i hat is a unit vector of length 1, and the angle between two unit vectors that point right is 0 degrees. So we have the length of that times the length of that times the cosine of 0 degrees. That's just a very complicated way of writing the number 1. So i hat dot i hat is just good old 1. So there's our answer. Sum i equals 0 to 99 of g at x sub i times d over 100. We've done most of the hard work here. What's x sub i? Okay, but what's x sub i? Hmm. Well, x sub i is the position after you've gone over by i steps of d over 100, because each of these steps had width d over 100. Okay. So now we just have a g that comes out front. The d over 100s, those come out front, so we have d over 100 times d over 100, times sum i equals 0 to 99, of i. Now what is sum i equals 0 to 99 of i? Some of you might know that sum. It's a sum that you definitely did sometime back in high school. Sum i equals 0 to 99 of i, I will just tell you, is 99 times 99 plus 1 over 2. So let's summarize that. 
Now, of course, I made this very explicit and easy to understand by choosing that to break this up into 100 segments, but I could have broken this up into capital N segments, in which case the work would have been G times D over N times D over N times N times N plus 1 over 2. Now if you take the limit that N goes to infinity, this thing simplifies a lot. Another way of saying taking the limit that N goes to infinity is I take the spacing between each of these little uh, segments, I take that to be extremely small, and then the number of segments, which is uh, d over the tiny spacing, which I can call the tiny spacing t for tiny spacing, d over t, which is the number of segments, which is n, is getting very, very large. Well, I already see a perfect cancellation of one of those n's here. If n is getting absolutely huge, this other thing becomes n plus 1 over n, which you can write as, well, we've got the g, we've got the d squared, we've got the half. n plus 1 over n becomes 1 plus 1 over n. And in the limit that n is huge, this term becomes negligible. So this is 1 half g d squared. Now, for those of you that are taking calculus, and you're taking calculus which has already gotten into integrals, uh, it might not be a surprise that an awful lot of this looked like exactly the formalism you do when you're calculating an integral. And indeed, this thing here, 1 half gd squared, you can get this thing way, way faster if you've just done this right off the bat. If you're no calculus and you know that way of getting the area under a curve, you would have just done integral 0 to d of dx, and then what would have been here would have been the, uh, the amount of f in the direction of motion, but the direction of motion was to the right and f was to the right, so the amount of f to the, in the direction of motion is just f. Uh, of x, and f of x in this little simple model that we just did was g times x, where g is a constant. So this is g times integral 0 to d of x dx. Now the integral of x is x squared over 2. So this is 1 half g times uh, x squared evaluated between 0 and d. Well, x squared evaluated at d is d squared, and x squared evaluated at 0 is 0, so this is equal to 1 half g d squared. So that's your answer. That's your fast way of getting the same thing that I just got, if you happen to know uh, integrals and see that what I was doing was actually calculating an integral. Now that's a huge amount of material, and I think I better split this up into multiple mini lectures, because all by itself that was already a huge amount of material. I still have some more nitnoids to clean up, but at least now we're getting making some progress on what you do if either the path is curved or the force is varying and you are asked to calculate the work. You have to break up the path into a whole bunch of little segments and calculate the work for each segment.